clouds and mushroom clouds All sitting there for hours Trying to get the flower To unlock for more power And the fleet evil bows are Rescue the princess from that tower When I was younger I used to hire games from an awesome video game rental store called Mr. Magic Video. It was run by a bloke named Jeff who was always sourcing the latest and rarest titles. Back then there was one game on every N64 owner's mind, Ocarina of Time. While we waited, a couple of cool games with RPG elements materialised with Imagineer's Holy Magic Century and Konami's Mystical Ninja starring Joman. One day I went into Mr. Magic Video and saw Joman on the shelf, but I had no money to hire it. I went to leave, and Jeff pulled me up and said, take it and pay me when you return it. That's the kind of guy he was, a caring old bloke who knew what these games meant to us. Many years later he suddenly passed away, and Mr. Magic Video closed its doors soon after, which left a huge hole in Geelong's gaming community. I was shattered. Mr. Magic Video Flying through the sky so fancy free I always wanted a chance to thank him for all the kindness he showed me, but that's life I guess. Just a small disclaimer, the game's actually pronounced Goemon, not Joman. So, Mystical Ninja starring Goemon is an action-adventure series developed by Konami for the original NES. It's had sequels released across a variety of formats, but the one that Aussies will remember the most is the N64 version. It is one of the earliest examples of a 2D series transitioning successfully to 3D. The game has RPG elements, and it features a cast of wacky, off-the-wall Japanese characters and a strange and surreal sense of humour. Goemon himself is actually based off the Japanese version of Robin Hood, who lived in the 15th century Japan. The game actually starts with a classic 80s anime intro sequence that resembles stuff like Ranma One Half, pretty amazing for the N64. Goemon and his friend Ibisumaru have to stop the Peach Mountain gang from turning Japan into their own personal theatric stage. It's so weird. In fact, the translation appears to be pretty stodgy at times and it features laugh tracks like a television sitcom. This only adds to the strange appeal of the game though. Along the way they meet up with two more playable characters, the Swordswoman Yai and the robot ninja Sasuke. Everyone has their own unique abilities that help unlock the various areas of the game world and are switchable by the press of a button. An amazing feat of programming for the N64. Oi! What the fuck? Get back here you little bastard! The characters have their own unique personalities and animations, like just look at Ibisumaru when he tries to crawl around on the ground, like what's he fucking doing? German's upgrades include a chain pipe that help you to cross wide gaps, and he can also power up into a Super Saiyan to move these metal blocks that litter the game world. Ibisumaru gets a camera that reveals secret passageways, and he can also shrink to access new areas. Yai obtains a flute that you can use to summon a dragon to carry you anywhere in Japan and she can also transform into a mermaid to access underwater areas. Sasuke can use bombs to open cracked walls and he can jump very high. He also upgrades his kunai into special ice daggers. My favourite characters are Yai and Sasuke because whenever you attack an enemy this happens. Ah, uh, it never gets old. I've got to say, being able to switch characters on the fly is a godsend. I always wondered why Rare didn't do that for Donkey Kong. Would have made the whole game a lot better. This title actually plays a lot like Zelda, and there are several dungeons scattered across a fairly hefty world map that can be traversed in real time or by summoning this cool dragon. The dungeons are pretty well designed and interesting, and the 2D style gameplay of the SNES game actually transitions really well into 3D with only a shit camera to complain about. Throughout the game you'll find these little cat-like fortune dolls that you can think of as pieces of heart from Zelda. Look at that, you even have a heart meter that's a lot like Zelda. Zelda, Zelda, Zelda. You'll explore towns, talk to NPCs, buy armor and food and take part in many incredible set piece moments, such as racing along the back of a flying dragon, shrinking and hiding from a rogue Mr. Satin, and most amazingly of all, take part in epic giant robot battles. 
There's even an amazing 80s style anime song. Impact himself is hilarious. Like, I seriously didn't know the Japanese like to take acid and get high before they develop their Goemon games. Towns are filled with NPCs to speak to, and if you get lost, you can go and check out the fortune teller for some directions. Plasma! Oh, oh shit. Plasma! Now, I don't know why, but video game characters dancing is just really funny to me. The visuals are pretty decent, with a large draw distance and very well animated and expressive characters. But as is the case with most early N64 titles, the textures and form of the landscape is a little bland. The music is fantastic, with fun, upbeat tunes filled with Japanese flavour and suitably epic synth and guitar tracks for the later dungeons. And there are no less than three songs that play at various points throughout the story. Once again, an amazing feat for the time. Bosses are pretty awesome, they do alright. Especially the giant robot battles. I mean, seriously. So awesome. Look at those thrusters! The game's also got one of the best finales I've seen in any game, let alone an N64 game. Just brilliant. Look at that. So I wonder if Konami will ever revisit this awesome series once again. Having this IP just sitting there dormant seems like a huge waste. Imagine a brand new Goemon game. Fuck, I'd buy it. Mystical Ninja starring Goemon was a fantastic game when it came out in early 1998. With Zelda 64 constantly delayed and scanned amounts of RPGs on the N64, things were dire. And Goemon and friends came along out of nowhere to fill the void. These days she's showing her age, but believe me, the memories and the fun that I had with this game will never be forgotten. Thanks again, Jeff. See you next time.